This week's app idea comes from Dan Abramov who wanted a Hacker News clone where people are nice. So here we are, we're gonna build a Hacker News app, the client for the official Hacker News, and we're gonna use Google Cloud's natural language processing API to try to parse away everything where people aren't being nice. So everywhere where people are being negative or something like that. In theory, that should make the entire site feel a lot more nice and more pleasant to use. We'll see if it actually works, but it should be okay for an MVP. Turns out Google's natural language API actually works pretty well. Let me show you. We have an app here that shows Hacker News stories. So if we click on one of them, it loads um, comments. And if you try to open a comment, it only shows the ones that are positive. So here you can see that even though there are three replies, it's only showing us one of them because that's the only positive reply. The app also lets us browse based on type of story and that's really all there is to it. Well, obviously, if you click on a story, you will also see the actual article that it's showing. It can be some, somewhat slow sometimes. And we're gonna add posting and commenting in, an, in another tutorial two weeks from now, because otherwise there will be just too much going on. Here's the stack for today. We're using Mobex for state management, the Firebase API for talking to Hacker News, Google Natural Language API to parse out bad comments, and something called React Native HTML view so that we can render HTML as a tree of text components. As always, I'm gonna be doing a lot of copy pasting so you don't have to watch me type. If you do wanna watch me type, you should go check out my personal YouTube channel where I live streamed part of the process. We start with some basic navigation. We're gonna have a dropdown that lets us select different types of Hacker News stories. The easiest way to build that with Shoutem UI is to use the navigation bar and a card stack. Let me show you. So we have a card stack that we render in our provider as the only component that app renders. It takes a navigation state from our store. We're going to define that later. A render bar, render navbar function, which looks like this. This is the function that renders the navbar on top. Um, the way it works is we take the current route from navigation state. Then if it's a story list, we render a dropdown. If it's something else, it's usually going to be a actual story. Then we render the title of the story. Uh, we also have render dropdown. This renders the actual dropdown. And the only reason it's a separate function is because it's a lot of code and it's easier to make it readable like this. It, we're essentially using drop-down menu, taking story types from our Mobex store. We have an action to change this change selection, and that's basically it. I'll show you how the selected option and non-option selected work in a bit. So we have the render navbar, we have render drop-down. Another one that we need is render scene. This is how card stack decides what to render on each transition of, of our routes. And it looks like this, but we're going to comment it out for now so so that we can have so that it's easier to get it working. We're gonna return an empty screen. The app now shows an error because we haven't done our stuff in the Mobex store yet. So let's add the Mobex store support for navigation. We're going to use an observable for story types. And that goes into store. We have an observable for story types. It lists an, the name of each type and its value. Then we have something called a navigation state. And as you can see, we have it prefixed with an underscore. And that's because we have to do some small transformations before um, card stack can actually read the navigation state as it's defined by Mobex. That's because Mobex tends to change our objects and add specific methods to it so that it can do its mobile stuff. So to work around that, we're gonna add a computed for navigation state. And that essentially just returns the underscore navigation state, but transformed to work with a normal JavaScript object. Then we need something called current route, which we're going to use in a computed selected story option. So selected story option goes through our list of story types and looks at which one is currently being used in the route. That's gonna help us define, define what the dropdown is showing is currently selected. 
and another one I think we need is the navigate back action this changes the navigation stack decreases index by one and pops out the current route essentially going back in the stack of routes and we also need what was the other one why did I put them so weird so we have pick story type and that's the one that that's the action that triggers when we select something in our drop down so if everything works now we should be able to go into the drop down pick an option ah I copied too much so we don't have we haven't added the ability to actually load stuff yet so I have to comment that out now if I click ask HN it goes there if I click show HN it goes there and I can go back through the stack perfect now let's load those stories and then show them to the world loading stories begins in our Mobex store we first have to initialize Firebase that connects us to the Hacker News official API. Then we need two observables. One is for stories and one is for items. Stories is going to be just observables of top stories and then their IDs. Ask stories and their IDs. And then items you can think of as a cache that holds properties of every Hacker News item that we have. Because comments, stories, they're all just an ID with a bunch of properties. And Hacker News actually uses the same API to access both once you have it, the ID. And because Firebase gives us a live connection to stories, we're also going to have the ability to listen for live changes on top stories, ask stories, and so on. So we need a, a little something to help us make sure that we're only listening to each of those once. When we have our observables, we need an action called listen for stories. This action takes a story type, checks if we're already listening for that story type, and if we're not, it sets the flag to true, the listening flag to true, then it connects to Firebase, asks for a specific story type, and does a dot on, which makes it live listen to every value change that happens on the Firebase API. Once that happens, we take the top n stories. Um, I think I've set it for 30. Let's make sure I'm copying that over. So we take the top 30 stories of each story type, call something called update stories. Then when we update stories, we listen for changes on every specific story. So let's add that. Update stories updates our stories list for a specific story type and listen to story. This is going to listen for changes in primarily counts of likes and which comments it has and stuff like that. It connects live to, to Firebase and calls update item every time it gets new data. And update item is going to be the same function we're going to use later on to load comments. And this one sets the sentiment, fl sentiment has been fetched flag to false. I'm going to show you what that's about later. And then it updates the item in our cache. Now to trigger our listening for stories, we have to first start listening to the default story type, which is top stories. And we do that in app component did mount by calling store dot listen for stories. There you go. It's immediately starting to talk to Firebase. To render our stories, we're going to create something called the stories list. So we import it, get an error. Then we uncomment where we're rendering it. And we're only going to uncomment the part where that's rendering the stories, not the part that renders individual items because we're not there yet. And in our stories list, we're going to take this stuff from here. Now that's a lot of code to copy paste all at once, but I'm going to explain how it works. So our stories list is a component that takes a Mobex store observes it and if stories for a particular story type are already loaded it renders a list view with those stories otherwise it renders a spinner the, li uh, the list view uses stories and then a particular story component to render each row each row then looks like something like this when the story is not yet loaded so it's not in our items cache in the store it so it shows loading kind of should be a spinner but okay and if it if we do have the story, then we render something called a touchable opacity, which lets us click on it. Then it's basically just a bunch of components that give us styling. We render a title, uh, how many likes it's got, how long ago it's been posted, 
and a right arrow that indicates to users that if they click on this, it's going to slide and go to the next car stack card. And as you can see, the result is that we have a list of stories that we can look at and we can't click on them yet. It's kind of slow, but there it is. It works for top stories. And now it's time to load, filter and show comments. Look who came to hang out. Oh, he just wants pets. He's not actually going to help. Hacker News comments are just a tree structure of similar looking items. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a component called HN item that's going to at the top level render a story and at every other level it's going <laughs> to render comments with children. So the first step is if, and then uncommenting what we already had before for rendering the first HN item that's the actual story. The story component renders a top level story and it looks like this. It's essentially just rendering children, which is a list of all the comments with a header that is called story header. The story header component has a touchable opacity that lets us click on the title and open a new URL with the linking API. This is built into React Native. So if you do linking.openURL, it opens Safari with a specific URL or website. Then we have something that shows some metadata. So a subtitle with uh, the score of the item. So how many likes it's got, who it was, it was posted by and how long ago. And then if it, if it has it, we also render story text. This is for instance in ShowHN or SKHN uh, stories, we can have some text in the actual story. We render an HTML view which so the way HTML view works is that we give it an H we give it some HTML because Hacker News comments <laughs> Hacker News comments and stories are in HTML. So we give it HTML and it renders it into native React components. Similarly, every comment is rendered as an HTML view with some other stuff. But because comments are nested and very deeply nested, we want to be able to toggle the children on and off. So a comment is a full React component that has some state for show children and a toggle children function that lets us toggle those that show children on and off. In the render function, we render a view with some padding. And again, we render a caption on top that shows us who posted it, how long ago it was posted and whether it's a positive or a neutral comment. Then we have an HTML view that renders the text of the comment. And then if there are any kids left, we uh, render the children toggle. That's a button that lets us turn comments on and off. And if we currently have children on, then we render the children component with, which is essentially just going to repeat the whole process. It's a list view with comments and so on. At the very top, we also have a children toggle function, which is essentially a helper function that renders how many replies there are and a little arrow that either it's either pointing right when it's turned off and down when comments are on. To load our comments, we need to add some stuff to our Mobex store. We start with we start with an open story action. This is what triggers the the rendering or the loading of. We start with an open story action, which which is what we trigger when we open a specific story. It updates our navigation state, then calls load item to recursively walk through all the comments and load each one. So load item is another action that looks like this. It connects to Firebase and then only once fetches the value of an item, uses update item to update it in our cache. Then if there are any kids, it goes through all of them and loads all of those items as well. And then we have something called analyze sentiment. This is what's going to talk to Google natural language API and fetch the sentiment of our comment to decide whether it's positive or negative. The way analyze sentiment works is that it's another action. And essentially it looks if the current, if the sentiment has already been fetched. The reason we want to check for this is because loading sentiment is relatively slow because the API, it's really fast, but still we're making a lot of requests and we want to avoid making requests for data that we already have. So we do a fetch request that posts some 
uh, JSON to the Google API. It says we have plain text and we give it the text, then we parse it and when we have the result we call update sentiment, which is this sort of action. If we got the document sentiment, because sometimes we don't, I don't, I still don't know exactly why, but sometimes Google API doesn't return anything. If we do get document sentiment, we update, we essentially just update the state in our Mobex, in our Mobex store, and that automatically triggers re-renders and potentially renders the comment if it's positive. Now, I think I also have something here that I commented out earlier. Ah, and that's in pick story type. I commented out listen for stories. That's why SKHN didn't work earlier. And just like that, we should have a working app. So I'm on the top of the Hacker News front page. I click Math Education and I get an error. Excellent. What did I forget to do? Well, I have no idea what went wrong, but copying the HN item file again fixed it. So we have a working app now. If I click on Math Education, we get all the comments. And then I can click Full Replies and we get more comments. And then there's two more replies down here and one more reply. And essentially, that's the tree structure I was talking about. I guess that was easier than I thought. So join me in two weeks when we're going to add actual interaction to this so that you can post comments and upvote things and so on. And uh, if you do want to see that, don't forget to subscribe. You're not going to find out about it otherwise. Well, I'm probably going to post it everywhere. But, you know, it's nice if you subscribe.